Hey, what's going on guys and welcome back to another episode in my Football Manager series. This is episode number 63 and today we are returning with two of the final four games in the Premier League as Millwall are clinging to 7th place on the back of, well, absolute heartbreak. Uh, of course, you saw the last two games in the last episode, our big 4-1 victory over Newcastle away at St James's Park, which is just our first win in the Premier League since right back at the start of March. Uh, and then, of course, our 2-0 loss to Benfica away in Portugal, which saw the game finish, uh, sort of tie finish 5-5 over two legs, but they won on away goals, and uh, that was absolute heartbreak. But this Tambusi character that scored the goal is a 6'6", six six new gen slash region centre-back, and I've been scouting him, uh, you know, behind the scenes, and I gotta say, I've been thinking about bringing this guy in for next season. Well, I don't know what kind of reception he'll get at the den, being the guy that knocked us out of Europe last season, if he is to come in. But uh, Benfica went through to the next round of the Europa League, and uh, as you'll see as well, these are the semi final ties. For those interested, Benfica take on RB Leipzig, and Wolfsburg take on Juventus. Uh, so, yeah, the, the two games today are against Manchester City and Leicester, both at the den uh, in two of our final four. And as you can see, we are still sat in seventh place with four games to go. Now, we have a game game in hand on both West Ham and Bournemouth who right now are four and six points behind us respectively but because we've lost to Manchester City every time we faced them in a series I'm pretty sure with three games to go we'll still be four points behind and I'm just hoping our goal difference doesn't take a hammering in this game because right now as you can see we've got the big advantage there nine goals clear of Bournemouth 11 clear of West Ham in eighth and of course due to our tidiest right now it could well come down to who has the better goal difference record now of course we're not going to uh, catch up to Spurs we're 11 points behind it's not going to happen because we need to win all of our four games and that's not going to happen so we won't not going to fit. Not going to finish sixth. That's a third. Not going to finish sixth. But uh, I, I think seventh will be enough though uh, to qualify for the Europa League, just like it was last year, because uh, the FA Cup semi-finalists, as you can see, are right now all in. Uh, the, oh, hang on. Semi-final been played. Oh, the semi-final's been played. Well, the semi-finalists were all uh, top four teams, apart from West Brom. Who, yeah, who lost to Chelsea. So because of that, that should do it then. The final is Chelsea versus Manchester United. And right now, they're both in the top six, which means the seventh should see us qualify for Europe, Europa League. I think. I'm not 100% sure on that, but I'm just hoping for the best because we're clinging on to seventh for dear life right now. And after an atrocious run of form, I'll be absolutely gutted if we bottle it right at the end of the season, which we almost did last year, if you remember. But anyway, heading into the game, uh, we're going to go to the 5-3-2 for this one. Now, I know against Newcastle, we played a 4-2-4 and finally got a win, but against Manchester City, playing a 4-2-4, we'll just get the midfield totally exploited. So we'll switch to 5-3-2 for the game. Uh, I think we'll stop playing out of defence in this one, though, and uh, mix the pass. Yeah, we've got mixed passing on and uh, go with this system and this will be our lineup for the match as hopefully we'll get at least a point and end our abysmal run against my city so this is our team then Pekka Jingol at our five with Chilwell, Maori, Ferencic and Benjamin and Achel Madder at right wing back our midfield trio is Koulibaly at a dream and remain and up top Ready Naldo and Marek Kucha the club captain on the bench Lunin, Jordan, Ranieri Temperini, Louise, Abdul Kadir and Black so no place for Dobby no place for Webster no place for Benka they're getting games off after playing on Thursday night but hopefully this team will be enough to see us get a point. Highly doubtful, but you never know. Come on, you lions. Chelsea have already been crowned champions. Manchester City right now are looking to cement a top four place and hopefully for them finishing second. Whereas for us, we're so desperately clinging on to that seventh place position. And if you remember last season, the, the, the season domestically was quite similar to this one in the Premier League where we just totally bottled it right at the end. And then on the final day, we just about scraped it by the skin of our teeth. And in the end, of course, as we found out, eighth would have been enough. But either way, I, it's not going to happen again. We're going to need seventh this year. Sane's shot is easily caught by Petkovic. And if we do throw it away, especially to our, to our rivals, West Ham as well, that'll be an unbelievable choke. But we've lost every time we face Man City in the series, seven straight defeats. So I'm predicting it to become eighth. But if we could get a point in this game, that would be a massive, massive result. Another highlight here, once again, coming to our visitors. He started off well, crossed the middle, is cleared by Achel Madado. Maybe a chance on the break here. Marek to Ready Naldo, if you remember, against Newcastle, combined for our four goals. Ready Naldo's done really well there. And which one in across the ground? And there is Marek to slide in and give us the lead. Well, Marek has not had, always oh, been ruled out for shirt, but I was going to say he's not had a good season this year in front of goal but that was almost four in two for our club captain but the goal disallowed for a shirt pull rarely see that in fm but again we're away on a counter oh it could have been but Remain played the wrong pass, deflects back to Man City, and now they're going to have a chance. That was a brilliant chance there for a breakaway for a two on two. And again, another chance here. Remain, this time pick the right pass, mate. This time pick the right pass. Well, that would do. Back to the dream. And now a wide to our home from Cooley Barley as we attack down the right side. That was a brilliant chance there, but Remain just didn't play the right ball. And now here come our visitors, Alvarez Miranda finding De Bruyne. 
through to Yedvai. I'm tempted to switch to counter, soak up some pressure and hit him on the break, but that never works for me on FM as Miranda goes down the right and crosses, and there is Harry Kane, who plays it back towards Jim Bird, the new gen slash region right back, blocked, cross into Sane, cross to the far post, there's Miranda, and there is the first goal, Leroy Sane gives the visitors the lead, and we do indeed trail. We just cannot get anything against these guys, and last year with Hull in my FM17 save, it was Manchester United, we lost all the time, this year it's my city, yet to get a single point against them. All the other teams, that the big teams in the Premier League, Chelsea, Liverpool, Arsenal, Man United Spurs, we've, we've always got at least a point against them at some point, I should say always, we've got a point against them at least at some point in the series, but Manchester City, this is going to be eight straight defeats, we just don't have an answer for them, how was Miranda into the middle, Romain gets it away, and Marek is there, they're, they're our arch enemies this year, last year of Hull was Manchester United, this year is Manchester City, Marek down the right hand side, trying to do all the work himself, plays out wide towards Ben Chilwell, and can we get back on level terms here with 10 minutes to go in the first half? Remain on the ball, dispossessed, and now Chilwell gives it back to him. Not having a good first half at the moment at number 14. Free ball to Marek, though, and a chance for us to get back on level terms here. Kuchar crosses, Chilwell's arriving, and Penn Chilwell. How about that for a rare goal scorer? Makes it 1-1 and puts us back on level terms. This is his first goal for Millwall, I think. I'm pretty sure it's just flashed up to the bottom there, and it's 1-1. So back on level terms instantly then. Marek with the assist, and Ben Chilwell... Rising highest, in off the post, makes it 1-1. One, one. That was a long sequence there, but two goals scored, one goal apiece. And uh, as we try and get ourselves into half-time tied at 1-1, one, one, I would absolutely love this result if we could get it. That would be a brilliant, brilliant point for us. There's a long way to go, of course. And based on our, uh, our record against Manchester City, we expect them to take the lead again at some point as Remain on the ball finds Cooley Barley. But if we could go a goal up before the break, that would be the dream. And speaking of dreams, he's on the ball now. Back to Remain. Remain out wide towards Ahumada. Good chance here for our right wing back to cross. In it goes. Ready now. Is it the far post? Oh, ready now, though. Why hasn't this guy been playing like this for the entire series since we brought him in? That's two goals in two now for our number 29. And we turn the game on its head. The dream to uh, Remain. Lovely ball out wide there to Ahumada. And as our Argentine fullback crosses, ready now that the far post peels off his man. And heads it across the goalkeeper this time and into the back of the net 2-1 and we lead Manchester City finally you can tell by my voice I'm half surprised half expecting this lead to go pretty quickly after the restart there's no way we hold on to the victory here yet to get anything against our visitors in the entire series so far and on the back of that heartbreaking defeat away in Portugal I'll be gobsmacked if this scoreline stays the same for the final 30 minutes but we are still leading by a goal can we hang on to the three points what a result this will be 10 minutes to go, still leading by one. First highlight of the second half, it is going to come to our visitors, but as Temperini wins it back, oh no, no, Temperini, that's the second time he's done that this season, has just gifted Manchester City an equalising goal, and they're back on level terms, the ball was played in, and Temperini seemed to have it under full control, but funnily enough, his best asset is his passing, that's the second time this season he's basically played a through ball to a visiting team, Harry Kane plays it in, my eagle to finish 2-2, and if we throw away, even a point now I'll be furious come on just hold on for the draw I'll take that but I just know it's going to happen surely the visitors now are going to get themselves back in front long ball Pavard's lost out my eagers through Petkovic big save well done son come on come on come on almost there I would have been ecstatic with the point pre-game Benjamin Sane oh no <laughs> No, no, I just knew it was going to happen, Leroy Sane with the goal, and finally, Manchester City get their deserved winner deep into stock, this is the second game in a row this has happened, Benjamin gets away, oh Sane, what a finish, that take a deflection, I'm not entirely sure, Petkovic wrong footed though, and I don't believe it. This is the second straight game in stoppage time. We've experienced heartbreak. Unbelievable. 3 to the final score. I would have been delighted with a point pre-game. And I'm going to say I'm not happy to performance out there. I, I can't believe this man, seriously. We, we, we trailed, we turned the game on its head, and then to throw it away in stoppage time, two goals late on, absolutely devastated about that. That means Spurs now have guaranteed sixth place. We had to win that game to have any chance of finishing sixth. That wasn't going to happen anyway. But... Oh my word, what a point that would have been. We sent us five points for, uh, clear with three games to go. And right at the death, second straight game. Unbelievable. I just want to see if that goal took a deflection there because 
It seemed like Petkovic should have had it covered, really. I know it came through a crowd of bodies, but... Oh, yeah, look at that. Right at the death, just before it was going to be pushed away by the Croatian. It took a nick off of someone. Who is that online? Oh, it's Ben Chilwell, who scored in, uh, in the first half. And in the end... Oh, that is absolutely gutting. Right at the death, it takes a little nick off Chilwell. Oh, agonising little nick off Chilwell. Pass the Croatian into the back of the net. Oh, second straight, second straight game. Absolute heartbreak in a massive match at the end of the season. How much heartbreak can we take? So we're about to jump into the second and final game of today's episode. Once again, the Den, this time against Leicester. I'm just realising we haven't won a game at home in the Premier League, I think, since the beginning of February against West Brom, if I remember correctly. Uh, and Bournemouth play at 3pm today. West Ham must play tomorrow. Yeah, they're home to Burnley uh, at 1.30. So we're playing at the same time as Bournemouth, who should beat Crystal Palace. So we're going to need to get a result here against the Foxes. But yeah, our last home win was all the way back at the start of February, like I thought, against West Brom. My goodness, we have not won a game at the Den since February in the Premier League. Time to change that. We've got to get the three points here against Leicester because Bournemouth will be Crystal Palace, who right now are struggling mightily, sat in 19th place, I believe. Yeah, they could still stay up, but they've got to win that game themselves. And um, come on, we, we've got to get the result here. We've got to get a return to winning ways. We need it. Otherwise, we're going to drop out of 7th. And we, we can't afford to do that because to have any chance of course, from like qualifying for Euro, we've got to finish in seventh. So, uh, we're going to go to 4 2 on for the game. And uh, I know this hasn't been working in the Premier League, but I believe in this system. I really, really do. We need our wingers back on in Louise and Webster. And I want O'Reilly too because O'Reilly this season has done very, very well. He's had a really quietly good season. Five assists and four goals in 28 games. Not too bad for a player who's recovered a couple of knocks this year. And he's recovering from one. This will be his first game since injury today as well. So, this will be our team for the game. Then Pekovic in goal. About for a Timon, Jordan, Ferrin, Chuck and Bree. Midfield Joyce, Dobby and Cudi Barley. Attacking midfield trio. This is the threatening trio that we love. Louise on the left, Webster on the right, and O'Reilly in the middle, supporting Julian Benker, who will start up top today. And on the bench, Lunin, Benjamin, Ranieri the Dream, and a very top heavy bench here. Marek, Reliable Black, and Reddy Naldo as well. It's the second game, it's Leicester. Got to get a win in this game. Desperately need one. Let's get it. Come on. Our final two games are against Arsenal and Stoke. Now, we're definitely going to lose to Arsenal. We might possibly get a victory against Stoke, but I struggle against them on FM quite a bit. So we might just get a point there. And there's, there's no way that Bournemouth are going to slip up today. And West Ham are probably going to beat Burnley at home as well. So I think this, this game here has to be the victory. We've got to get a return to winning ways. And the first highlight is going to come early. Oh, yes. And there's a deflection in our favour. Come on. Mamadou Koulibaly with just his second goal in a Millwall shirt and his first of the season gives us the lead. But that was never going in had it not taken a deflection off the Leicester player. Louise's corner struck on the half volley. First time by Koulibaly. Takes a nick off someone. I can't find out who that was. But into the back of the net. And we do have a lead. So two deflections, two goals, one against us, and now one for us. And in front early. But a highlight directly from kickoff, and I'm pretty confident Leicester are going to get back on their all terms directly afterwards. Silver down the right finds Xiang Min Son, and the Korean into Kovalenko. Plays a long ball forward. That should be cut out by time, and which it is. And as we lead by a goal, I can't, I can't overstate how important this game is. We're going to lose to Arsenal, that's for sure. So we've got to get at least one win in this game or against Stoke. So come on, you Lions. Here's Fede Reyla on the ball. Through to right, out wide towards Son. Chance continues here, headed away by Koulibaly, only temporarily. Dolberg now picks it up into Adzic, towards right. Lots of space here to thread it through to Fede Varela. Oh, Petkovic, big save. Well done, son. Benka on the ball for Millwall, getting away from one and comes forward to shoot. And Perrine makes the save and turns it behind for a corner. If we would have gone two goals up in the first 10 minutes, that would have been fantastic. But still leading by just a goal. There's definitely more goals in this game, though, no question. We're trying to corner routine again. And then Cooley Barley shot this time, blocked and cleared. But still 1-0. Very good start to the game. No way this finishes at just 1-0. Interesting decision to start Benka, who scored most of his goals, what well, the vast majority of his goals in the Europa League this season. Has born for gone in front against Crystal Palace, but Reddy and Aldo, I know he scored in the last game, and uh, and Marek this season has been very inconsistent. And I, I just trust Benka; he's our top scorer this season with I think it's 15 in all competitions. As Jordan finds Clinton, 
and Webster hits the post as he goes behind for a goal kick. It's it's crazy to think we've got such good strikers here, but none of them this season have been consistent. Ben Caredi and Aldo Marek, if you want to count Black as well, none of them have been able to be consistent all year long. And and that's really frustrating for us because we, we need a reliable goal scorer if we are to remain a European standard team. We're still leading by one, 10 minutes to go in the first half. We've played well, could have been two goals up, but as things stand, I will take this result because we just need to get a win by all means necessary. And I just saw before half time that Crystal Palace did equalise away against Bournemouth to make it 1 1. So it might be a rival team, but right now they're our best friends as we're trying to see them take points off Bournemouth as we try and hold on to the three points here as well. But we can't worry about what's going on across the grounds. We need to just do our job and get the win here as Louise down left hand side crosses. And there is Julian Benker off the post and scrambled away second time today. We've hit the woodwork. If we fail to get the three points, as Louise finds Benka, and he's hit the post again. That's the third time now we've hit the word. If we don't win this game, I'm going to be furious. We threw it away against Manchester City and Benfica. If we throw it away for the third straight game, I'm going to tear my hair out here. Or what's left of my, less left of my hair? As Koulibaly finds Dobby into O'Reilly. Matt on the ball comes inside to shoot. Way over the bar. Got to get these three points. Don't let it slip. And Crystal Palace have just taken the lead away against Bournemouth. That's excellent news for us right now. Because this win will be even bigger in terms of the gap between us going into the final two games. And I think they'll still be able to make up deficit, but only just. So, oh, no, I've jinxed it. They're back on little terms. But it's 2-2 two -two there. But as things stand, we're doing what we need to do. Come on, 70 minutes to go. Just hold on. Free kick for Leicester, though. Floated into Casper Dolberg. Don't throw it away later on for the second straight game. Dolberg finds the left back here in acres of space. Shut down eventually by Bree. But he's round him now. And now the shells receives it. Don't. Give them an opening. Oh, Kasper Tolberg puts it home. And we just cannot hold on right now. We haven't kept a clean sheet in a long time. And Dolberg has given Leicester the equalising goal with 40 minutes to go. And I can't I can't forgive Petkovic for this one. Against Manchester City, it was a bit of a deflection on the Sane goal. There certainly wasn't this time. Lachelle's into Dolberg, takes touch, goes for goal. And as I take touch, touch, goes for goal. And Petkovic got to stop that one. That was right next to him. 1-1. One, one. And if we throw this point away, I'm really going to gonna lose it. Right, later on I'm gonna go to the 4-2-4 here. I'm gonna bring on Reddy Naldo for O'Reilly. And I'm gonna swap him and Julian Benker around. Actually what I'm gonna do is take off Benker and I'm bring, gonna bring on uh, Marek for our final few minutes. I mean, <sighs> disappointed that once again we're gonna throw away the victory, and if we throw away the point again, I am actually, actually going to lose it. It's made even worse now, because more have gone in front, and here come Leicester, I don't believe it. Dolberg's through, and puts it wide. If we would have lost the game there, I would have gone absolutely mental. Well, that should do it then. Black's going to come on for Webster, and play as an inside forward for our final few minutes, because you just never know when John Black's on the pitch, do you? But with three minutes to go, that should do it, or will it? One final highlight, and one final chance. Marek cleared away. And in fact, this might well come to Leicester, you know. Long ball forward, missed. It'll drop straight to Ferencek. Thank goodness for that. My heart started racing a bit there. Cannot afford to lose this game as well as Peckwich's ball is poor. Peckwich is really struggling towards the end of the season after having such a good campaign for us. Dolberg to Mahrez, timing cuts it out. Gordon Louise, away you go. Down the left. Louise, chance to win it. Pick the right cross. Marek turns it in, yes, get in, and finally, we're going to win at the den in the Premier League for the first time since February. Oh, I thought we were going to throw it away again. The, the late drama in these past few games has been incredible. A quick counter-attack, Louise latches onto it, great cross to the far post, and I was thinking if Black gets on the end of that, you know he's going to score, but Marek wasn't going to give him a chance. The captain takes matters into his own hands, comes off the bench, makes it 2-1. Oh, thank goodness for that. Oh, no. 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 Oh, it's going to go over everyone and behind for everyone. I thought I totally jinxed it there. But that should do it. And there is the final whistle. Come on, Marek Kuchar, the club captain, coming up big once again, giving us the victory at the death. And after two straight games with that happening against us, about bloody time it happens in favour of us. A late winner, this time scored by us or not conceded by us. And a big... Big pressure on even three points. My word, did we need that. So that means now the table's going to look like this as we end today's episode. There's two games to go. Obviously, we can't finish any higher than 10th. We knew that already. But we're six points clear of Bournemouth. Due to the goal difference swing, they could still make it, but it's going to be tough. And as for West Ham, they've got to win their game tomorrow and they're at home to Burnley. So what I'll do actually, just before we end today's episode, is we'll simulate through to that game. 
and uh, we'll praise Louise for the uh, number of quality chances he created. What we'll do is we'll simulate to that game. That's coming tomorrow afternoon. That's the lunchtime kickoff on Sunday. And we'll cross our fingers and hope that Burnley can do us a favour away against West Ham. Because if they can take points off them, then with two games to go, destiny is firmly in our own hands as we'll take on Arsenal away in Stoke at home. So let's just quickly get to the game, simulate through, and I say simulate, process through, and, uh, and find out if Burnley can do us a favour. What a big, big result that was there. Thank goodness for that. Marek coming up big. And as we wait for the result to come in, it should have happened now. If not, after one more process, we'll find out. Oh, it's 2.30, but it's not. Okay, one more process. That should do it. And we'll find out together. Yes, Burnley! They did take points off indeed. Uh, just a draw for West Ham. And that means with two games to go, we're almost there. One point, and we've done it. Just one point needed. And we will qualify in 7th place for the Europa League. Or, or I'm, I'm saying we should qualify for 7th place in the Europa League because of the FA Cup finalists as well. Excellent news. What a great way to end today's episode off after starting off with heartbreak. So that will end today's episode of the Football Manager Series, guys. So big thank you for watching. Really hope you have enjoyed it. And I'll see you for the season finale. we take on Arsenal away in Stoke at home where just one point will see us guarantee 7th, which again should see us qualify for the Europa League. Have an awesome night. Much love. And I'll see you for the next episode very soon. Get in. Come on.